But I would say that if the leaders of Russia, of Ukraine, of the United States, of Germany, were actually asking that question, that question they were asking, I think they'd find a way to answer it. But I don't think they're asking that question. I think they're asking very different questions. And they have very different aims. And that's why this is going on. So I, it, to me, the answer is pretty obvious. How you make people do that, that's a different question. Why is it that egoistic uh, geopolitical interests take first place over these things? That's the real question. And when you say we understand, I don't know who you're talking about. Most people don't even know, you know, in this country, where Georgia is, for instance, except the state of Georgia. Most people are really, really, and in Russia too, I mean, there's, there's a, the, the, the level of, of knowledge is lower than, uh, uh, than the doorstep, as they say. So there is no effort, and the media does not play that game at all. It doesn't say, how do we stop? It says they are to blame. And that's it, and on both sides. So I think the only way to stop it is for us to talk, make our voices heard. And that's not easy, and sometimes it's dangerous. But again, if, you know, did I ever, no, of course not. There was a guy by the name, his last name was Niemöller. He's a German um, who fought during World War I. He was a, the, the youngest Japanese U-boat commander or the U-boat, as they were called, submarines. And when Germany lost the war, he was totally crushed by it. And he became a priest, Protestant priest, in Hamburg, and very anti-war. And as he, grew, he, as he uh, uh, went up the, the ladder, as it were, Hitler did too. And Hitler became the head of Germany, and he became the head of the Protestant church in Hamburg at the same time. And he spoke out against war, and finally he was arrested, and he was sent to a concentration camp. But he <clears throat> survived. And when he came back, he wrote a book. And in that book, there's a passage that I know by heart, because I think it's one of the most important and powerful things I've ever heard. He wrote, when they came for the Jews, I didn't say anything, because I'm not Jewish. And when they came for the communists, I didn't say anything, because I'm not a communist. And when they came for the trade union members, I didn't say anything, because I'm not a member of the trade union. And when they came for the Catholics, I didn't say anything, because I'm not a Catholic. And when they came for me, there was no one to speak. And I, feel very, I very much feel that way. If we don't speak out, well, however we can, and not irresponsibly, and not to say, oh, look who, you know, look at me, but rather with this understanding that it's our, it's our human duty to do this. Well, then, and you know, we keep saying, well, they should do it. That's certainly very Russian. They should do it. And if they don't, then what? So that's, really, that's my view. And it's an idealistic view, perhaps, but that's the way I look at it.